people um, demonstrate a lot of national pride. So they wear um, Brazilian colors everywhere, shirts and, and, and bathing suits and, and flip-flops that have Brazilian flags on them. And, and, and so they're very patriotic. Um, very unique for a developing country. They tend to not have the same identity in developing countries, and there's not a common theme that brings people together. Um, so Brazil, I, I, I put that up as a great example of social support. Um, social support relates to um, friendships and, and social relations, strong supportive networks, um, both at home, at work, in the community. Um, so if you're out of uh, out of work, do you have a social network that might help you out? Um, I, I recall a circumstance where a single mother, um, who actually was in our ward, um, we lived in California at the time. There was a single mother who um, was looking for a job, and she uh, she wasn't very active, but she called my wife and asked her if she would um, watch her child while she went to um, a job interview. And so my wife watched her child uh, for just a couple of hours, and, and, and my wife asked her what she had done the uh, day before, and she said that she had just taken um, her son to the job interview and asked him to just sit quietly in the car. And so you can imagine um, poor social networks if you don't have that social network and you have to go to work or go to a job interview in this case and you just uh, uh, go with your child and ask them to sit quietly in the car um, and uh, you can imagine all of the problems that can happen. Uh, it could get too hot in the car. Um, he or she could be kidnapped. Um, what are they doing in the car? Um, are they, are, are, are they um, eating unhealthy foods, leave them with a bag of Cheetos and, and tell them to, to be quiet. I'll be back in an hour. Uh, so the really, really uh, um, difficult circumstance if you don't have a social support network. Um, and this is one aspect where I believe the church provides a network for people um, that, that can help to buffer some of the otherwise negative impacts. Um, so we have home teaching and we have uh, visiting teachers, and we have elders quorums and high priest groups and relief society that, um, in essence, provides this social support network. Um, social capital is a word that is very relevant here, and we're going to talk about um, in a later discussion. Now, this is um, very interesting data, um, and this is where mothers and fathers would turn for help, advice, and support. Um, and so, um, under um, difficult circumstances, where would you turn? And most people, most uh, mothers and fathers, report that they would turn to immediate and extended family and friends. Now, what if, uh, what if those don't exist? What if you don't have a very strong social network? And if most people report turning to those, where, where do you have left to turn? Um, really, community resources is about it. So what if you're a, a recent immigrant and um, you don't have a lot of immediate or extended family, and, uh, and maybe you feel socially ex excluded, and, and indeed you are, so you don't have a lot of friends. So where would you turn community resources, but what if those, um, you're not aware of those, you don't speak English very well. So you can see when you don't have a social network, you're really left in, in dire circumstances in cases where, um, where you need support. Um, what this shows here is um, individuals that suffer from um, low assets, um, low community assets, low individual assets. Um, uh, both of those um, relate to thriving behaviors. So, um, and ecological assets would be things like, um, uh, and in fact, this data here come from the Search Institute, and one of the main um, indicators of ecological assets is having people that you know that you can trust. And so if you don't have people that you know that you can trust, so you, you have a very weak social network, um, you're less likely to engage in thriving behaviors, gainful employment and, and, and educational related endeavors. Um, very interesting related to a social network um, here. So once again on the x-axis we're looking at income inequality and we're looking at data points of states and uh, they, this idea that most people can be trusted in my community 
And, and once again, you see that those that have low income inequality tend to be the states that report that most people can be trusted. Um, levels of social integration and mortality. Um, and so what you see here is mortality rates uh, for both males and females um, would be highest. Um, um, would, 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 so you kind of have to look at these in reverse order. Would be um, the, the highest rates of mort the highest mortality rates would be um, in, in communities with low levels of social integration. And, and these are across various counties in the United States compared with um, some international sites as well. And so um, low social integration, again, might be indicators such as voting, um, accessing community resources, um, trusting your neighbors and things like that. So higher mortality rates in, in, in areas where those things are not true. Next, um, addiction. <coughs> Excuse me. Individuals turn to alcohol, tobacco, and other drug use, and they suffer from their use, but it's really influenced by their wider social setting. So, ex uh, accessibility, cultural acceptance, um, and we've talked about those a little bit in previous lectures. <coughs> And there's probably some cyclical um, causation here, meaning that people turn to alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs to numb the pain of some of the harsh, so harsh social conditions. And um, ironically, these, or not ironically, but, but um, as a result, these tend to lead to lower social mobility, and so the cycle continues. And um, also, we have some pretty good evidence to suggest that marketing concentrates in socially deprived communities. And so, um, you know, we, we don't want to let, um, I mean, we can't have this discussion without talking about marketing practices for alcohol and tobacco. And, and certainly they target lower income communities because those tend to be the people that buy them. But do they buy them because that's who's being targeted um, it, it is a very valid question. Um, so here's data that I've collected um, and looking at correlations between the distance to the nearest retailer and some select neighborhood characteristics. And so what I found here is that the closer you live to an alcohol or tobacco retailer, um, the quality of the neighborhood decreases dramatically. So there's greater unemployment, there's lower education. Most of the homes are rented, not owner occupied, which would indicate that it's kind of a transient community. Um, lower population, or pardon, younger population, so they're targeting adolescents, um, greater percentage of homes um, led by single mothers, and a greater percentage of Hispanics. And so generally what you see is that these, that the quality of these neighborhoods tend to be lower in areas where there's a lot of retailers. And so are the retailers locating in these communities because that's where they sell the most, or um, or, or do they come to these, uh, do, they, do the retailers come first and then because the retailers have located there, their real estate is cheaper? And these are, those are very good questions. I'm not sure that any of us know the answer or the answers to either of them, but uh, certainly there's a very strong relationship, uh, which indicates that, um, and, and we know um, from other research that I've done that um, how close you live to a retailer um, and, and what you see on this table here is that um, the distance to the nearest retailer, which would be um, under the variable column, would be one, two, three, four, five down. Distance to the nearest retailer is a very, very strong um, predictor of alcohol and tobacco use. And so if you live close to a retailer, you're most likely to be poor, which means you're more likely to use alcohol and tobacco. Um, and, and this is drug dependence um, on alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs. And what you see is that your risk for being def dependent on these substances is much higher um, in, in, um, in, in people that are uh, economically challenged. So if you're lower on the social gradient. 
Um, so next is food, and so a good diet and adequate food supply.